Medical professionals of Reddit, what is the craziest DIY treatment you've seen a patient attempt? I'm a dental student where we see mouths in pretty awful condition. One guy came into the emergency clinic with teeth half rotted off from decay and told me he has been putting gummy bears in the holes to make it less sharp on his tongue. That reminds me of the time when I tried to DIY a tooth from a mentis because I had lost a tooth just before the day where we took school pictures. I remember I was rolling in stomach pain and went to the doctor because my mom could not stop giving me chamomile tea all the time instead of actual medicine. It was not my stomach. I went directly to her since one of my ovaries was full of cysts and some of them exploded. Update. I took the plan B pill and according to the doctor those cysts were caused by the pill. I don't know what to think about that. Update 2. This year it was my second time taking this pill. My body recognized the medication and did not have other reaction than my period coming 3 days before the estimated date. From now on since I am chilled free I will save money in order to go to a clinic and having spay neuter surgery. Oh man I am so sorry. I have cysts on my ovaries and one burst. I woke up my roommates and my then boyfriend, now husband, came over, middle of the night, picked me up off the floor, and rushed me to the ER. In comparison to the contractions before I had my kid, the burst cyst was worse. I'm a physical therapist, and this was more on accident than a DIY but I think it still fits. My patient was diagnosed with frozen shoulder and one day over the weekend he was getting into his garage when his arm hand got caught. The automatic door raised up and brought his arm with it. He came in the next week saying he was fine and no longer had problems with his shoulder. I joke with all my frozen shoulder patients that they should just try this at home. Infections of the skin of the external ear canal are common and treatable. Hard to get to though. A dairy farmer who didn't have time to see us got a long rubber tube that he used for something to do with cows, not sure what. Fed it into his ear canal, then poured cow antibiotics down the tube. He came in when it didn't work. Seeing a doctor in the UK is free. I'm a doctor, but didn't see this first hand unfortunately. However, my friend in ED saw a young 17 year old boy that came in with personal trauma and mild blood loss. She tridged him, taking him to a room with his parents and asked what he'd come in with. His mom turned around and said, go on, tell the lady what you did. He then proceeded to tell her that he tried to circumcise himself with scissors for religious reasons as he hadn't been circumcised when he was younger, but had to stop halfway due to pain. Eventually the shame had grown enough that he had to tell his parents who immediately took him to ED. Some antibiotics and a revision by urology later and he was able to be sent home. Another one I know slightly unrelated was an older man that came in with penile swelling. He'd used an elastic band as a makeshift on ring, but neglected to take it off. I have no idea why. He was a little odd to say the least. A week goes by and his penis starts to look literally like an aubergine. He then comes into the surgical assessment unit and we see him there and is booked for surgery the next day after we eventually picked our jaws off of the floor. He had literally killed all of the tissue in his penis to the point it was almost falling off. One full pinectomy later and he now only sits to pee. I'm not sure how he tolerated the first day. It must have hurt so much before the tissue died. What the frick is wrong with people in this thread? Parents sneaking essential oils onto their premature baby's skin. They have central lines. These oils can wick onto the line and damage the line, cause infection, or interfere with medications. Infections in preemies can mean death within hours. Preemies have incomplete skin with much faster absorption rates than fully developed adult skin. These oils can cause burns and damage their insides. Your pyramid scheme company is not a reliable source for neonatology treatments. Please dear god keep oils off of any baby, but especially preemies. Dental office. Patient comes in with veneers on her front teeth she made herself out of acrylic nails, the pomade sets you can buy at Walmart. Surprisingly it looked okay from a distance, but the amount of random glue she used in her mouth to get them to stay will probably come back to haunt her later. Woman I know has a dog that is epileptic but was not willing to medicate the dog for some time. She kept trying holistic remedies, one of which she informed me about was giving the dog all natural vanilla ice cream during a seizure to stop it. You know, because you should always try to put stuff in the mouth of a seizing animal. It didn't work. The dog is on meds. Seizures are controlled now. Imagine that. 
There are some weird conditions that cause low blood sugars occasionally in growing dogs. My brother's bulldog would get this weird little seizure tremor activity but when you gave him a little ice cream, it cleared up incredibly quickly. That's probably what they meant to rule out I guess. Not me, but my mom. Had a gentleman walk himself into the ED one day after he tried to give himself a vasectomy with an animal neutering kit he bought on the internet. When she asked him why, he told her that his wife wanted to have a sixth kid and it was too expensive to pay a doctor to do it and how hard could it be to DIY. That is a man dedicated to not having another kid. Worked in pediatrics for a few years and we had this one family come in with a kid who was burned by one of those microwave ramen soups. They put duct tape on the now blistered skin to keep it from popping in the car. Interesting fact, microwave noodles are the number one cause of burns in children. Guy had abdominal pain, drank a bunch of beer and tried to give himself an appendectomy with a steak knife on his front porch. Wife calls 911 after she see him performing sepuco. We roll on on scene and ask him if he want treatment right to the emergency department. He looks up at us. Looks down on the mess he has made, says, hang on lem see if I can fix this first. He then tries to cauterize the wound he made with his cigarette, realizing that that isn't working and goes, well crap, let's go, I guess. I fix the coffee machine Martha, I can fix Ms. Elf too. Still a student, audiology, but I had a very elderly patient come in with broken hearing aids. He said they were dirty so he washed them in the sink with soap and water. Pro tip, hearing aids are not waterproof. Yes, he was warned of this when he first got the hearing aids. Thankfully he was still under warranty with the company and they were kind enough to let him slide on this one. Otherwise that would have been dollar sign 4500 down the drain. I work in a pharmacy and one of the pharmacists that was there filling in that day told me that during his morning shift he had a woman call and tell them she pulled out her own IUD and wanted a painkiller recommendation. I cringed so much when he told me, as I had just gotten mine switched out that same day coincidentally and was still in quite a bit of pain from it. Turns out, there are DIY instructions on Pinterest on how to do this. This should go without saying but please don't do this. Go to a professional if you want it removed. A friend of mine said her insurance pays to put it in, but not take it out. So she used Pinterest videos and removed it herself. She's fine and said it didn't hurt, but I cringed when she told me. Plus insurance is fricked up. If they weren't willing to pay for removal they shouldn't pay to put it in. IUDs don't last forever. Not a doctor but my grandfather was in decreasing health. Over the course of a few weeks he got to where he was having trouble breathing occasionally. So he gets the idea that he will go get an O2 tank to help him. Does he go to the doctor? Number. He goes to tractor supply and buys an acetylene torch. Brings it home and hooks it up. Whenever he would get short of breath he would go in his office and only turn on the O2 before sticking the hose up his nose. I'm not a medical pro, but here's a story. My friend's dad got skin cancer on his right bicep. And at the time he was a large muscular man who ran a horse farm, huge arms, and so instead of going through all the normal BS of one getting skin cancer he caught it early and thought he could stop it at the source, so he heated up a railroad tie steak with a massive torch he had on his farm, till past red hot, and shoved it into his arm where the skin cancer began. He did this twice, to himself, and wrapped up his insane burn hole in his arm, a while later he went to the dock who said the burn he inflicted was the craziest crap he's ever seen. But all signs of the cancer were gone. He freaking killed that crap and it never returned. His arm and burn healed months later and he remains cancer free to this day. EMT here. Showed up to this Russian guy's apartment for a severe back pain call. Said he's had this pain for 6 months and became an alcoholic to deal with it. His wife was hammered as well and they both passed out the second the ambulance started moving. Patient was told they had an infection from leaving their contacts in too long. Decided to clean their eyes out with hydrogen peroxide. Two cornea transplants later. So sugar can be used to help heal certain types of wounds. A patient I saw had missed an appointment with part of their care team where they get their bandage changed. I noticed what appeared to be oozing around the edges of the bandage. Asked my patient about it, offered to change it for them we didn't typically do that in our clinic, they said yes, 
I go get fresh bandages and whatnot. Take the old one off and it's just sticky and stringy. Picture the slow-mo shots of caramel being pulled apart, and it smelled. To be fair, most wounds smell, but this was different. I finally asked them what they used to change their bandage since I knew it wasn't discharge. Maple syrup. They used maple syrup. When I was a kid, like 12 I dropped boiling water on my stomach. Microwave accident. Babysitter had me put toothpaste on it. Even as a 12 year old I understood that this made zero sense. In short order the burn started burning worse. I got it off and just left the wood to the air. Later on in a doctor's office I was told I did the right thing. People are nuts. Not a medical professional myself, but during my PhD in gastrointestinal sciences I attended a lot of clinical seminars. One doctor described having a patient with severe colitis who was so desperate for relief. The patient had their healthy sister poop in a blender, which they used in an enema as a DIY fecal transplant. As an aside, fecal transplants are a remarkably efficacious treatment for some forms of colitis, so this wasn't totally out of left field. I've actually been tempted to try that. Thankfully my new gastro finally got to the bottom of the problem. I was on a dental mission trip in Oaxaca, Mexico and a poor farmer came in with a toothache on one of his front teeth. It looked like it had had some work done to it so I asked him what it was. He said he did a root canal on himself. I inquired further. He had a toothache so he took a drill to his front tooth to give himself a root canal. Short of it was, it didn't work. Had a patient try and buy syringes from my pharmacy for injecting the dog. With what, you ask? Gatorade. My wife's dog has been really lethargic the last couple of days so we were going to try and give it some fluids in case it's dehydrated. The instinct for some would be that it was just an IV drug user seeking clean needles but I can assure you this gentleman thought his logic was sound and in fact intended to murder his wife's dog injecting it with sugary Powerade. I wouldn't call it a treatment per se, but the patient did. I work in a home health care system. Patients have long term IV accesses placed and are able to infuse sterile medications intravenously at home. Well, this patient kept getting really bad blood IV line infections almost weekly and having his line replaced. No one could figure out why and line infections aren't very common. He also was running out of saline flushes a little quicker than he should with no explanation. So the line was being maintained appropriately at least. Finally, while a nurse was there to get labs, change his dressing, and check for infection things finally clicked. He had been crushing pain pills, mixing with saline, and injecting it directly into his line. When asked directly he didn't deny it. The response was well. No one told me not to. Yes. Yes we did. We told not to put anything we didn't provide in there, and the pharmacy providing the pain meds put take by mouth on the little bottle. He got repeated painful infections, MRSA, and thousands of dollars in unnecessary hospital bills. Idiot. TL. DR. If you put things directly into your bloodstream that are not aseptic, you're gonna have a bad time. Had a guy make a dewy penis pump. Used it and realized he forgot to make a relief valve and he used mostly metal tube. So ya fireman had a fun time with that one. Plus his penis came out huge and I mean huge, also black and blue. This was before I became a combat medic. I was working at a hotel as maintenance. Suddenly the fire department shows up with an ambulance right behind. Turns out one of our guests decided to try anal sex for their honeymoon. Since they thought her butt was dirty they would clean it out with a fifth of vodka. So he shoved the bottle up there and she almost immediately went unconscious. They hauled her off and she almost died from alcohol poisoning. Buddy of mine was doing a EMT rotation while stationed at featuring. Brag, he got called to a barracks room by a very scared female. He was the first in the room and found a male soldier tied to the ceiling by a chain above his bed and was naked. He had a blanket wrapped around his lower half. The young lady sat crying in a chair as he removed the sheet. The guy had a metal coat hanger in his rectum. Apparently he liked that kind of stuff but the lady had inserted the hooked side and not the straight side so it was stuck. He was transported face down but up on a stretcher with the sheet to cover him but he still had a nice antenna wobbling about. 
Dog came in with some terrible abdominal swelling, lethargy, and BP so low we took 30 minutes to find a vein for blood work. I go in to talk to the owner and see he is Cushing's. I ask what he's being treated with. She proceeds to tell me he's not on medication and hasn't been ever. Medicine is bad for dogs. She opted to treat with miracle plants and supplements instead. These supplements cause the dog to deteriorate quickly. He died within a few hours. The animal ones make me sad. They're depending on their human to care for them and they're killing them instead sad. Finally, something I can add to. When I was in med school on my family medicine rotation I was sent in to see a middle aged woman with complaints of sinus congestion. Sure enough, from the beginning I can tell she's really stopped up with her nasally voice and my history and exam are consistent with your run of the mill viral upper respiratory infection. I begin educating her on symptomatic management and the following exchange ensues. Patient, do you think it might be the flu? Me. It's possible but unlikely. It's really out of the typical season. It was June. Patient. Yeah, I guess I wasn't sure it was. I've been spraying Lysol everywhere and it doesn't seem to be doing any good. And it says it kills the flu virus. Me. Well, that's something that could help disinfect the house and keep the virus from spreading. Patient. I guess. I just wish it didn't burn so much. Me. What do you mean? It burns? Patient. You know. When I spray it up my nose it burns so bad. Yep. My patient thought that since Lysol kills influenza the best way to nip it in the bud was to flush her sinuses with it like a saline spray. It did not work. For the record. The fact that I didn't immediately fall over laughing and instead seriously counseled her against ever doing that again is still the greatest featuring golf composure in my entire career. TL. DR. When the label on Lysol says not for internal use, they mean it. Not for internal use. Now. Now it says that. It was marketed as a douche and birth control in the 1920s. My wife works in the IQ. A dude tried to cure his heartburn with a remedy he read online. Baking soda. Only he used too much baking soda and drank it with coke instead of water. Completely wrecked his intestines. Not sure if it fixed his heartburn. Background info for those who don't know, a pessary is a device that women, usually older, can use to place inside their vagina and help support it. Sometimes with age and history of men and childbirths, the ligaments that support the walls of the vagina within the body can become loose leading to prolapse, meaning it starts to fall down into itself like a telescope. The pessary acts to hold it up and keep this from happening. Anyway, I'm an end surgeon. But my buddy told me the story of an experience in the year where a lady came in with the chief complaint of roots coming from vagina. Turns out she had lost her pessary and decided to use a potato. It stayed in there for so long that it started to sprout. This story made me ever so happy with my career decision to choose the opposite end of the body. Edit. Into itself. Not into Italy. My mum has that problem but uses the proper medical equipment. She did tell me that her grandmother used an apple to do the same job. Apparently it was pretty routine to use produce of some sort. I just can't see how you get from part of my body is falling out to a Maris Piper or Golden Delicious will be just the thing. Had a patient today with diabetes who was taking himself on and off his meds as he pleased. He would stop taking the meds whenever he thought he was getting better and then when he inevitably started gaining weight again he would start taking them again. This is unfortunately common. Had a dude try and pull out a rotted tooth with pliers. Kid had a drug test the following day so to cleanse his system he drank a jar of pickle juice and then busted open a bunch of niacin pills. Patient with festering leg wounds that wrap them with tampons and duct tape. First time I saw maggots in a wound. Stuffing raw bacon in their nose to stop a nosebleed. But it actually kind of worked. Why right to many people with big pus collections under their skin that get drunk and stab them with broken glass or something else sharp. Many YouTube videos can demonstrate. Niacin to defeat a drug test is a common one. I doubt it helps at all and it probably makes you feel just awful. Just hydrate, kids. Drinking plenty of water is the only help you can get. A nurse once told me about this young homeless looking hippie guy who was admitted for a nasty cut on his leg. Apparently it had gotten badly infected because the guy was attempting to treat it by putting finely ground marijuana into the wound. I feel like dumping weed into a wound is more expensive than just getting stitches. 
Not a doctor. This is actually me. My great grandmother once tried to give me a tablespoon of sugar and kerosene when I was feeling sick. Thankfully my mother intervened. Ah. The all permanent cure. Can't be sick if you're dead. Egg whites cure giant abscesses. Except you wind up arriving in full blown septic shock. Instead. Working as a field paramedic. Get called to a guy's house. His problem originally was constipation. Four days of constipation. We get there and he's sitting on the toilet. And says he can't get up. First thought. He must have some other problem too. If he can't get up. Nope. First thing he asks is if we can just reach up in there and pull the poop out. Then he tells us he tried but couldn't get it loose. But he did push it around. We of course say. No. They'll deal with that at the hospital. So why can't you get up? Then he tells us. And also demonstrates. He tried some laxatives. One dose for each day he hadn't pooped. Took them all at once. Edible ones. That help loosen things up. Starting from the top of the digestive tract and working their way down. They were working their way down. Uncontrollably. It was like a flood being held back by one last huge boulder at the mouth of a cave. With spurts and sprays going around the boulder. But the boulder was holding firm. 30 minute drive to the hospital later. Goop boulder he made by jamming his finger into his butt held firmly in place. But the diarrhea mudslide his super dose laxatives created was still making their way around the jam and spreading across the stretcher and ambulance floor. Irresistible force met a movable object. In his butt. Vet student here. We once had a family that came in when their dog ate a bag of Easter chocolate. We had to induce vomiting. But first asked if they had tried anything at home. They said they read online to make the dog eat a bunch of salt to make it throw up. This poor dog had a bag of salt repeatedly poured down its throat before he came in. Pro tip, if your dog ever eats chocolate and you panic, have him ingest about 2 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. He'll vomit out liquid frothy chocolate, so put him in the bathtub immediately after. Save your dog. Save your carpet. Please take him to the vet also. The hydrogen peroxide is just in the event that you can't rush him in. Excellent tip. Thanks. My dog got into my big Hershey chocolate bar and ate the whole dang thing. I didn't find out until hours later. He was as fine. Dentist here. A lot of people come in with that temporary filling material from Walmart packing into broken teeth. If you have a big cavity that is abscessing don't plug the drainage hole. The cavity. It's like plugging a volcano. As a side note, I'm really surprised Walmart hasn't been sued for that. Jesus. The last thing I'd want to do with a big cavity would be to put something in it. I work in Amish country. The general rule of thumb is that the first line of treatment is to rub kerosene on it. No matter what the injury or ailment. Woman treated a cat bite by putting bacon on it to draw out the poisons. Except that didn't work and she ended up on IV antibiotics for 3 days. Plus she wasted good bacon. This happened before I was a doctor. A neighbor kid had a small cut on his hand that became inflamed. He thought it was a good idea to douse it with hydrogen peroxide and use an unsterile sewing needle to poke holes in and around the injury so the hydrogen peroxide could get into where the infection was. Even as another dumb adolescent, this sounded stupid to me at the time. Not a medical professional, but a buddy of mine who used to work in an emergency room had someone come in with fingers blown off on the 4th of July. His mom handed the doctor a Ziploc bag with red and white in it. Apparently she put his finger remains in a bag of milk to be reattached, because that's what you're supposed to do when you lose a tooth. That's a good way to kill an amputated body part. Putting severed digits in water or in this case milk would cause cell death. They'd absorb too much fluid and burst. Direct contact with ice kills tissue too. Take an amputated body part, bag it and put it on ice. Called over to take Zrazen of an ancient guy's penis that he got a pipe cleaner stuck in. Not sure if he was doing a mister. Fix it for erectile problems or he had something in his urethra he was trying to clean out. Greatest career regret that I didn't make a copy of that. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.